Mr. President, the blood, sacrifice, and noble principles of millions of gallant souls across America's history have made this nation the unipolar superpower of the whole world. Our international policies now significantly impact the peace and security of the entire human family. The very first responsibility of this nation's government, and especially its commander-in-chief, is to protect America's national security. The only two ways we have to do that is to prevent any enemy or potential enemy from having the intent and the capacity to do us harm. The intent of the Islamic Republic of Iran has been crystal clear since they took and held 52 American hostages 444 days at the beginning of their radical revolution those 36 years ago. They have been waging war on America and their neighbors ever since. Iranian leaders have openly bragged how their bounties and weapons have killed hundreds of American Marines and soldiers on the battlefield and shattering their families. But the only way Iranian leaders could truly achieve their ultimate goal was to become a nuclear armed nation. Consequently, they proceeded inexorably in that direction, both secretly and obviously, for decades, until America and the Western world came together with resolutions, sanctions, and warnings of military intervention to halt and dismantle this unspeakably dangerous threat. This pressure finally brought Iran to the negotiating table. And now, instead of increasing and using that pressure, you completely ignore the original commitment that sanctions would only be dismantled when Iran's nuclear weapons program was dismantled. You blindly accepted whatever Iran put on the table, and you completely forgot who was at the other end of that table. And then you proceeded to capitulate on every red line and minimum requirement that both you and the United Nations had required. You've now squandered away every form of leverage we had against this theocratic radical regime, which has broken every promise to us it has ever made. And what did we get in return, Mr. President? We got yet another of their rope-a-dope, duplicitous, unverifiable, and astonishingly unenforceable promises to temporarily slow their inexorable advancement toward nuclear weapons. But only so long as we are now willing to legitimize and empower their anti-American jihadist government agree to lift all sanctions, lift bans on Iran's weapons imports and ballistic missile programs, allow Iran a protected protocol to enrich uranium and research even more advanced centrifuges, give them tens of billions of dollars with which they can continue to spread their terror and destabilizing expansionism uh, all throughout the world, allow them to continue their human rights abuses, including illegally holding American citizens hostage and allow them to keep their entire nuclear infrastructure. All the while, the supreme leader and ultimate authority in Iran is publicly reaffirming his hatred towards the United States and publicly leading throngs of his supporters in shouting, death to America and death to Israel. And then after all of this, in an arrogant attempt to solidify this insane agreement, before Congress had a chance to vote on it, you, the President of the United States, sworn before God to uphold the United States Constitution, orchestrated Monday's Security Council approval of the Iranian nuclear deal to subordinate the sovereignty of America, the United States Constitution, and the United States Congress to the authority of a United Nations Security Council that votes against American interests two-thirds of the time. Wow. Did I get all that right, Mr. President? Bill Clinton made a far better deal than you did, and the result was that the police state of North Korea proceeded to develop nuclear weapons only a few years later. Sir, regardless of your magnificent ability to obfuscate and explain it all away, you know I got it right. You have not changed the intent or the capacity of the jihadist government of Iran in any significant way. You see, while you idly stood by and knowingly watched as thousands of innocent civilians in Iraq were either butchered, tortured, raped, beheaded, crucified, or burned alive by ISIS, the Iranians were intently watching, and they knew that they had nothing to fear from you. 
So the jihadist leaders of Iran came to the table with nothing and walked away with everything. And now instead of making sure they never get a nuclear weapon, your politically motivated peace in our time capitulation empowers this the most dangerous sponsor of terrorism on this earth and places them on a sure path to obtain an entire nuclear arsenal. Mr. President, unless Congress or a future president is able to stop this madness, you are now on trajectory to be remembered as the father of the Iranian atomic bomb and the one who ultimately nuclearized the entire Middle East. By these actions, you have betrayed the United States and Israel, along with our most committed allies and innocent people all over the world. If one considers the shambles of your foreign policy in every corner of the globe, I suppose those who predicted your capitulation to Iran were only making the obvious and safe bet. But how I wish their predictions had been wrong this time. Because this time is different, Mr. President. This time your arrogance may place the finger of jihad on the launch button of nuclear warheads. And America's children and future generations may thereafter be forced to live their lives in the shadow of nuclear terrorism.